Hi, John Wilkinson and History Made Easier. A video here to help you with your analyses of authoritarian states and their domestic policies. I hope you're going to find it useful. So, analysing the domestic policies of authoritarian states. I begin by giving you a sample of past questions. Some are more general, with more choices for you to make. Others more specific. Some have been adapted by me to conform with the style of questions that you will face. Layers of analysis. I like the notion of layers of analysis. It can help you add depth to your essay as a whole and to each individual paragraph so you're consistently building up marks. Now in the examples I'm going to give, I'm not going to cover everything. That would be taking up a lot of your time. But I will hopefully spark some ideas for you to develop yourselves. And I begin with a very basic analysis. But a lot of good history comes from this basic way in economic, social, political history. Economic, social, political policies. There's nothing wrong with this basic way in. And it's used by the examiners. So it must be acceptable. But let's take a look at um, economic policies. Now again, a pretty basic analysis of economic policies. Uh, industrial, agricultural and the world of finance, including banking and the likes. Um, the things that you guys might be bringing in, depending on what uh, your, your, your particular studies have been, uh, but the five-year plans, the, the corporate state, autarky and the Nazi war economy, collectivization, nationalization, they're the kind of things that you will be uh, bringing in, I think in this section. Social issues. Uh, I begin with the new man and woman. Now, whether it's the fascist Italian, the, the good Nazi or the good communist, all leaders of authoritarian states wanted to mould their populations to their image of the new man, the new woman and what they should be like, what their values should be, how, how they should think, how they should behave. Women and the family, women, women's roles and their status, very different in fascist states as to communist states. Youth, again, I think making Italians, links to the Thousand Year Reich, links to good communists, making the revolutions permanent. That's why uh, the authoritarian states had such a focus on youth. Religion, always tricky for an authoritarian state. They didn't want rivals to people's loyalties, people's affections. And then we have racial and nationalist policies. Communism is an internationalist ideology and so had a problem with nationalism. Italian fascism wanted to create Italians. This is something that Italy had always had trouble with since it was united. Nazism wanted a national community, a racially pure Germany, Volksgemeinschaft. And culture was used to make 
ideology all pervasive by all the regimes. In your face, you can't get away from the ideology of the authoritarian state. And so to political policies. I put institutional changes. I'm thinking of things like uh, constitutional changes, the introduction of the one-party state, the plight of trade unions, that kind of thing. Propaganda that would always include censorship, I think, um, forcing home the ideology, the cult of leadership, celebrating successes, even if they weren't particularly successes, hiding the failures, hiding reality. The cult of leadership, the cult of Mussolini, Lenin, Stalin, Hitler, Mao, they all developed their cults, even if Lenin uh, would have been reluctant about that. It was done anyway. And, of course, dealing with opposition, their political rivals. Rivals in the same party, the various purges that we look at. Rival ideologies, getting rid of the churches. And then we have the population at large. The need for, for compliance, the need for obedience, if not conversion. So we have the police state, we have the use of terror, we have the, the ever-watching state. Now, the best history will make links between your different paragraphs. Links between economic and, and social policies. For example, women in work or out of work. Um, links between economic and political policies. This is intrinsic to communism. Communism is one at the same time, an economic and a political ideology. Um, but fascist Italy as well, a strong link with the corporate state. I think not so much Nazism, but it is there. Agriculture and industry and the critical importance in developing both sectors side by side in the backward Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China, but also the corporate state and also autarky. Very close links between the need to develop both agriculture and industry. And the links between social and political policies, making Italians the thousand year right, good communists, making those revolutions permanently. I'd go back to those things. But we must evaluate as well, and some, some questions will demand that we evaluate. And there are different ways to do this. Success and failure. I would measure against the aims, whether they be economic, social or political. Was the corporate state achieved? Was the war economy adequate? Was communism a success? As for social policies, was the new man created? Was the racial state created? And was political control strengthened? Benefiting the people or not? Uh -oh. Ideologies do seek to make lives better. We might not agree with communism or fascism, but they did set out to make lives better for people. They thought they had the answers. 
Um, but did Russians ever want communism? What about uh, jobs uh, in Germany, but guns before butter, as far as um, standard of living was concerned? So things to think about there. And of course, just as you do with, with causes, so can you with effects and look at short-term and long-term effects. Of course, what we define as short-term and long-term is relevant to the regime you're looking at. So, we come back to the questions that, that I began with and let's try and look at just some of the ways in to answering these questions. Evaluate the social and economic policies of two authoritarian states. Choose your policies and their central aims because you're going to evaluate. Or focus on whether they benefited uh, the people or not. The second question, social and economic policies in authoritarian states did not always achieve their aims. Discuss with reference to one authoritarian state. Well, start with some central aims, then evaluate key policies. Or another way in, pick off key policies and their different aims and evaluate. There's no one way to answer a question, but an analytical way is always going to be the best way. Question three, evaluate the treatment of religious groups and minorities in two authoritarian single party states, each chosen from a different region. Now you need to deal obviously with both religious groups and minorities. They can overlap, but as you know, they don't necessarily. I would evaluate what? Was their influence nullified? The influence of religious groups, the, the, the impact on society of minorities? That's one way you can evaluate. But another, evalu uh, another way you can evaluate is, is was the, the, the treatment of religious groups and minorities good, reasonable, or was it downright bad, downright immoral? And of course, you can evaluate whether uh, the uh, policies were successful or not. So again, different ways to approach the question. The domestic policies of authoritarian states rarely benefited women. Discuss with reference to two authoritarian states. Now I would try and be a little more sophisticated than the you know, average way to, to deal with this question. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, status might have improved officially in the Soviet Union with women in, in the workplace being treated equally, divorce rights, all of that kind of thing. But the patriarchal, even misogynistic culture never changed. And their economic well-being, well, that didn't improve, um, nor did their political freedoms. So try and try and think wider than the, the question might suggest. And if I turn to uh, Nazi Germany, well, many German women were grateful that the Nazis had provided jobs for their sons and for their husbands. And they didn't want to work for them, uh, themselves. Um, so again, try and be a little more sophisticated in your answer. Now then, the penultimate question, evaluate the impact of domestic policies on the maintenance of power in two authoritarian states, each from a different region. 
Well, um, we have the use of terror, the, the, the terror state in the Soviet Union, but it was made necessary by its economic policies. If its economic policies had been different, the means by which uh, uh, the maintenance of power uh, was necessary would have been different. Um, uh, so, so it was the economic policies that made the need for uh, the, the um, terror state. Um, and again, in Germany, we can explore how far the creation of jobs enabled the Nazis to consolidate their hold on power. And from that consolidation, they were not going to uh, lose that grip on power, only through war. And so the final question, compare and contrast the economic and social policies of two leaders of authoritarian states. Now, of course, communism and fascism provide a good contrast. But we have already noted comparisons. The new man, the, the economic plans, the, 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 okay, different degrees, but still um, stronger degrees than a liberal state in, in, in economic planning. And Stalin and Mao's policies contrast. Compare Magnitogorsk to the backyard furnaces of the Great Leap Forward, for example. And Mussolini and his corporatism, I think, contrasts with Hitler, who's always focused on a war economy. So um, I hope my analysis uh, is, is useful for you, and I hope um, this um, breakdown of, of past questions, and please, there are other ways of approaching these, other ways of breaking them down. But nevertheless, I hope they've given you uh, food for thought. So different ways to analyse the domestic policies of authoritarian states. Not all of it would have been surprising to you, but that's okay. Um, I hope it's added to your understanding of ways to approach those questions and ways to take your notes in preparation for your exams. So I, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, and as always, I thank you for listening and I remind you to check out my History Made Easier website. Cheers.